What's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning back in. Today, we're gonna to take a look at how to create a basic React Native project, and we're gonna be using the third-party tool, Expo. Expo makes it really easy for us to start a React Native project by giving us everything we need and allowing us to focus on one code base and not worrying about the native code for iOS or Android. Uh, this is very useful if you wanna develop fast. The only trade-off with Expo is that if you wanted to program things specifically for Android or iOS, you can't really do that. You'd have to use the normal React Native. And also, as far as using other libraries, you have to use something that is compatible with Expo. And Expo does have a list online of everything you can use with it. And the libraries are quite extensive, but those oddball libraries you might want to use might not be compatible. So it's just some things to look out for when you're deciding whether to use the React Native CLI or the Expo CLI. As normal, the code for this video will be posted in GitHub below. That being said, if you're having some compatibility issues or you're wondering why something may not be working, always check to see what versions of the code you're using. The versions of the code I'm using are all in the package.json file. And I know those ones work because that's what I made the tutorial with. But if you're having issues, try and make sure that those versions are the same. All right, guys, let's dive into it. There's a couple things we're gonna install globally here using your Git bash or your PowerShell or whatever it is you're using. And I'm gonna install globally a few packages here. It's gonna be expo, expo-cli, and TypeScript. I'm just gonna make sure I have those on my computer because I'm gonna need all three of them to, to do this project. Expo and expo CLI are the important ones here. The expo CLI is actually a command line interface that is going to allow us to use a command to create a base project similar to the way we use the create react app and using a uh, TypeScript template, Expo already has one built in that we're gonna be using. Once that's installed, we're going to initialize our repository here or our project. And we're gonna do that by typing in Expo init dash T. And then the template we're gonna be using is called Expo dash template dash blank dash TypeScript. Uh, if you just wanna copy and paste it, I'll have the command below inside of the video description. You should get a little prompt here to ask you what you want to name the package. You can just call it client or app or source or whatever you want. And then it'll go ahead and create that for you. Now that the project is ready, go ahead and open it inside of your favorite IDE. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code and I'm going to be using a couple of plugins with it because I think VS Code is probably one of the better editors out there right now and it's free. So you can't really argue with that. So now that I have Visual Studio Code open, I'm gonna to go to the plugin section here on the left. And I have three plugins that you can see here. Uh, VS Code icons, uh, Prettier Now, and another Prettier Code formatter. So the first two are Prettier extensions for VS Code. Prettier is a code formatter that will make your code look really, really crisp. Just in case you don't keep the same formatting across all your files, it'll make sure everything looks even for you. I really like using it and I highly suggest it, especially if you have more than one person developing on your project. And the VS Code icons just makes the icons a little bit easier to see inside of the file explorer. You don't have to have these, but you're gonna see me use the prettier extension inside of a settings file. So that's why I'm including it here. Again, this isn't mandatory for this video. So inside of our file explorer, in the root directory, I'm gonna create a folder called .vscode and then a settings.json file. And this is where I'm gonna have my settings for my editor here. Uh, Visual Studio Code is awesome because these can be different amongst many different projects. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm gonna put in here. As soon as I type in some quotes and start typing, you can see that it auto fills things for me. So there's a few things that I'm gonna want. First, I'm gonna want the editor.default formatter. And then you can see a couple options pop up here. So when I type prettier, we get a couple options and I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one. Next, I'm gonna do an editor.bracket pair colorization. I'm gonna set this to true because I want to see matching brackets as different colors. It makes the code a lot easier to read, especially when you're using hooks. Next, I'm gonna add some TypeScript options here. And you can add things like uh, format on save, format on paste. Again, you don't have to have all these, but I find these kind of useful. You can always do something like put on the word wrap and you can ignore the git limit warning. Next, I'm gonna create a file called prettier RC, starting with a period. And I'm going to paste in just some settings here that I like to use with all my projects. Again, you don't have to use these prettier options, but it's just something I like to add. So since we're just 
creating a basic project here. We're not actually going to make this app do anything. I just want to show you a few methods and a few ways to get your project set up here. I'm just going to create a very basic logging hook to show you how you can use logging to develop your React Native and mobile applications with Expo. And I'm just going to use it with a basic hook and a simple class. This logging class that I use, I use in a lot of other projects. So I'm going to just probably copy and paste it in here for you, but you can read through it to see how it works inside of the GitHub. And if you don't want to use my login class, you can create the same hook that I'm about to make with just the console.log. It's really, really easy. So go ahead and create the source folder. And then we're going to create two fo folders inside library and hooks. Inside of the library, we're going to create a login.ts file. And here I'm going to copy and paste a very basic login class with just your info error warn. Um, and it just go ahead and prints a timestamp for you. It's basically the console.log with a timestamp. That's all it really is. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and create a file in the hooks folder called useLogging.ts. And we're going to create a hook here. And first at the top, we're going to go ahead and import useRef from React. And then we're going to import our logging from our library folder. To create the hook, we're going to export a const. We're going to call it use logging. We're going to pass in a namespace that's a string. And we're also going to make this namespace uh, optional because it's optional inside of our logging class. And then this is going to return a type of, we're going to put brackets and then the type logging that we've imported. And then this function is going to have inside of it a const. And we're going to have current colon logging is equal to use ref and then a new logging class, and then we're going to pass in the namespace. Current is how you access an object on a reference, so we're just going to call it logging instead, just for simplicity. Then you're going to return the logging inside the brackets, and that's all you have to do to create this hook. So now when we use it inside of a class, you're going to be able to import the use logging, pass in a namespace, and then use that logging object. It's a very simple hook. Next, we're going to go to our app.tsx folder. I'm just going to change the spaces here to four at the bottom and just fix the formatting of this file. Now, if you take a look at this file, this is what's going to be shown um, when you're inside of your React Native app. So all it's going to do is just return a view that has that text in front of it. And this view is styled by the style object uh, underneath of our function. So let's go ahead and modify this a little bit. We can go ahead and declare our const logging inside of our brackets. And we're going to call that uh, use logging hook. And the namespace we're going to pass in is just application. You can call this home or whatever you want, but let's just call it application for simplicity. Then we're going to call a use effect. And the only variable triggering this, triggering this will be the logging variable. So it's only going to be called the one time. We're going to call logging.info and just a message saying loading application. Now when this application starts up, you should see this message in the console. So we're not gonna make any other crazy changes here. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to actually start this project up and start testing your mobile application. There's a few different ways to do it. You can do it in the web browser. You can do it on Android. If you're on a Mac, you can do it on iOS as well. Because I'm on Windows, I'll show you how to do it in the web browser, and I'll also show you how, you how to do it on an Android virtual device using Android Studio. If you wanna do the Android Studio route, you have to have Android, Android Studio installed and updated to the latest version and also create a device. And you'll see where that area is inside of that application when we get there. Inside of the console, let's go ahead and type expo start. see my browser pop up and then you'll see that I have a couple options here. You'll see that I, I have run on an Android device, run in the web browser, etc. So if I was to click run in the web browser, my application should load in another tab. So let's go ahead and do that. You'll see a little notification on the bottom right and then you'll see this start to compile. And just like that, this mobile application is working in my web browser. If I go to the console, I'll see that it's logging properly using my new hook. And now that we know it's working the way we want it to, let's just go ahead and change something and see if it reloads properly. So I can go back to Visual Studio and maybe I'll just change the 
uh, background color from white to gray, let's say. You can make this any color you want. And if I save this, and if I go back to the web browser, boom, the background of my view is gray. Uh, it should be noted that the web browser is loading its full resolution, but you can change this to develop on a smaller size using that button in the bottom right corner over your console. So now that this is working, if I was to go back to my Expo Loader, which is that other tab that I got going on, I should be able to start Android if I have Android Studio installed. So let's see what happens when I click it. So I clicked it, let's run on the Android device, and I'm gonna get an error because I don't actually have my Android virtual device running. So now I'm gonna open up Android Studio. And you can see the version I'm using here. So in, inside Android Studio, I'm gonna click the view, uh, view more actions. And I'm going to click the AVD manager. You can see I already have a phone loaded on it. If you don't have one, create one. I'm gonna hit the play button. And you'll see my Android device pop up. So let's see what happens now when I click run on an Android device. You're going to see that it's saying trying to run on my Android device. And now I'm going to get some console messages that I wasn't getting before. So this looks like it might work. You will have to give it a little bit of time, but Expo should pop up on the Android. And just like that, the app has loaded onto my Android. You can see that the background is gray, just like it was in the web browser. And if I go ahead and take a look at the code and I change it one more time, just pick any random color, I'm gonna pick teal. And you can see the background color changed again. And it also changed inside my web browser because now I'm running them both. And that's pretty much it. It's that simple to get a basic app started to developing on React Native using Expo. It's unbelievably easy using this third-party library. That being said, now it, once you've done this, I highly recommend that you go to the Expo website and then you go see all the packages they have available. And if they have everything that you need, I would recommend using it because it makes working with the code base a lot easier. All right, guys, thanks for tuning back in and we'll see you in the next one.